In this video, I will be diving into full body motion capture using the Rococo SmartSuit Pro and Unreal Engine. I will demonstrate a simple workflow by acting out some combat animations, importing them into Unreal Engine, and giving our Manny character some cool sword attacks. Finally, I will show you some other very cool things you can do with motion capture and Unreal Engine, and I will demonstrate an advanced workflow that is now possible in version 5.4 and above. And if you're considering getting one of these suits, stick around till the end to see what it's capable of and what you can do with it, or ignore everything I'm saying and just click the link in the description to get 40% off with the Indie Creator Bundle. But please stick around till the end. So here I have the Rococo Smart Suit Pro and also Smart Gloves, which connect to Rococo Studio software through Wi-Fi. Now this suit uses inertial measurement units, usually referred to as inertial motion capture meaning that this suit tracks movement using accelerometers, magnetometers, and gyroscopes without the need of any cameras. So after following the tutorials on Rococo's YouTube page on how to get set up, I now have a character that moves as I move in Rococo Studio. Now I did have some issues with my right glove, the pinky finger was acting pretty strange, and I contacted Rococo's customer support and they said it was a hardware issue and sent over a new pair. But other than this, everything else went very smoothly. And now it's time to start acting. All right, so I captured a bunch of different uh, movements here, and my goal is to do like a uh, sword equip animation and some uh, combo attacks, like a three hit combo or something. Uh, but it's very important to know that uh, anything you capture with mocap is called raw data. And the raw data itself is never perfect. So you'll have to do some adjustments manually to get it to perfect. Uh, things like uh, clipping where certain body parts overlap with each other or foot slippage where it looks like your feet are sliding at certain moments. So it's just important to set expectations that you will have to make some manual adjustments to the raw data that you capture either in Unreal Engine or in other 3D editing software like Blender for example. Uh, and it's also important to learn how to edit the timings of certain animations. So maybe I capture a stored animation, but it's slow or not synchronized with another block animation that I have. So these things you'll have to learn how to do. Uh, now I will import all these into Unreal Engine and then show you what I use to make these uh, manual adjustments. All right, so exporting my animations uh, to Unreal Engine is very easy from Rococo Studio. Uh, luckily, they have an option uh, where I can just select the uh, UE5 Manny, and then it exports uh, to the mannequin skeleton, which means I don't have to do retargeting or anything like that. So I kept all of the default options pretty much the same, and I just click Export. And then this just gives me uh, an FBX file, which I can just drag and drop into Unreal Engine. And as you can see, I've tested out a whole bunch of different uh, movements. All right, so I'm here in uh, Unreal Engine. I'm using the third person template. And all I need to do is really just drag and drop an animation here. And it's going to, uh, well, first of all, I'm using Unreal Engine 5.5. Uh, so if uh, this window looks a bit different than yours, um, that's why. Uh, but really the process is still the same. I just select the uh, SK mannequin uh, because again, we, Im we exported the animation to the UE5 skeleton. And I just say import only animation so I don't get any meshes or anything else like that. And everything else I really leave as default and just click import. So I've already done that before and I have a whole bunch of different uh, animations and montages uh, that I will be showing you and show you also uh, how I got them to be in a usable state. All right, so this is what the raw data looks like. Um, so I have the uh, mannequin already and I gave the mannequin a sword. And um, this is what the uh, raw data that I was just acting out looks like. And you can see that there are some of the issues that I mentioned. For example, uh, there is uh, like clipping here so you see this, this is uh, what I mean by clipping, the hand is in the legs. Um, and yeah, for example, when I am unsheathing the sword, it's not really aligned to the back. So if I want this to be perfect, I'll have to make slight adjustments here uh, to make it look like the sword is actually being taken off the back of the character and, and, and so on. Uh, but honestly, for <laughs> raw data, this looks um, pretty good. 
Um, and like I said, to get it perfect, you will have to do some uh, manual adjustments, uh, but already looking very good for raw data. All right, so after making some uh, slight adjustments to the animations, uh, this is what it looks like. Uh, so I just adjusted the hand positioning for the sheath and unsheath, though the timing could use a bit more work. And for the attack animations, uh, I adjusted the position of the feet so that they're more planted on the ground, uh, which I wasn't actually doing when acting them out. So I think it looks pretty good for just a few minutes of work. All right, so creating in-game animations is just one example or one use case for motion capture. A lot of the times you want to use motion capture also to act out entire scenes, put them in your level sequencer, and create um, sort of like a cinematic or cutscene in Unreal Engine. Uh, though, of course, again, you'll have to adjust the timings, get things synchronized together, and so on. Uh, but the raw data gets you uh, very, very far uh, along the way. Now... Uh, I mentioned I'm going to show you how I do the edits on the raw data. Uh, so for that, uh, we'll be using the sort of advanced workflow that's now available in 5.4 and above. Uh, what we'll be doing is using the control rig on the Manny character to add layered adjustments over uh, our original animations. And for a full length tutorial on exactly how to do this, Rococo have a uh, workflow um, on exactly this uh, new process. Uh, and I'll just be giving you sort of a quick summary of how I did it to make adjustments on my animations. All right, so in Unreal Engine, I have my uh, mannequin and any props that I want to use. And I'll just go ahead and create a new level sequencer. Um, and so I'll just save it anywhere for now. And what we want is to get our mannequin and drop it in the level sequencer and also get any props that we want. So get the sword and also drop it in here. And I'm just going to attach uh, this sword to the mannequin so that uh, it's holding it in the right socket. And I also need to zero out its rotation and location. All right, so here I now have the scene uh, ready. Uh, first thing I wanna do is add an animation that we'll be adjusting. So I'll go over here and search for my raw data. Now, if I move, you'll see the animation isn't moving and that's because uh, this control rig that comes by default when I add the mannequin. So I will remove that and now the animation uh, is moving. So what you'd want to do is uh, just adjust the uh, playhead if it didn't automatically to the end of the animation uh, so that the length is correct. And the sword as well, I need to do that. All right. So now here we have our raw data being acted out and we want to make some uh, slight adjustments. So like I mentioned, uh, I wanted to make adjustments to this part here when I wanted to sheath or unsheath. Whoop. Uh, so the way I did it is, uh, first of all, you go to your uh, uh, mannequin in the level sequencer, click on the plus icon and uh, search for control rig. Make sure layered is selected, and then I pick my uh, mannequin control rig. This comes by default uh, with the mannequin. Um, and now I have, basically I have controls, uh, which you can see here, uh, that I can uh, move around. But the thing we are most interested in is IK controls which I can find here under the global controls. I can find uh, leg IK, arm IK, and neck and spine IK. And the way we use these is, uh, now for example, I go to the part in my animation uh, where something needs to be adjusted. For example, uh, right here, uh, I need to adjust the position of my hands. So I'll go to a part where the position is good. I add a keyframe. Then I go to the part where it needs adjusting, like here, and I can just move things around. And because this is IK, the entire arm moves when I move the hand, which is perfect. And then I can just copy this keyframe and paste it back here. And I just made a mocap edit. So this is what it looks like.
much better. So of course you can uh, keep iterating on this to get it as perfect as you want. Uh, but generally this is the workflow. This is how you make edits. And then when I'm done, I can go back up to uh, my uh, mannequin, right click and say bake animation sequence, and it will just save this as an animation asset. And of course, uh, this is all of the raw data. So I would probably want to go somewhere and um, split it, go here and split it. And then I only want um, this part to be my animation. So that, that's how you would go ahead and do that, for example. Um, yeah, and that's, that's basically it. All right, so the last thing I wanna show you is this thing. So Rococo also does facial mocap. So you can capture your facial reactions while doing full body mocap. Um, this is uh, connected to an iPhone uh, with the Rococo Studio facial capture app. Uh, but if you're using Android, you can buy the same uh, headset with a camera at the end because uh, it needs a device with uh, uh, like a 3D facial scan. Uh, but as you can see, uh, if I do this, the character will also animate as I move and the facial reactions will also be captured as well which is very useful for something like VTubing if you want to create videos with a virtual avatar. All right, so to conclude, there's a lot of things you can do with motion capture. You can create a gameplay animation, you can create uh, cinematics, uh, you can create cutscenes, so you can uh, do VTubing uh, and so much more. But again, I want to reiterate that uh, you shouldn't expect to just put on the suit, act out some animations, and then you'll be done with the animation step. You know, there's cleanup involved. You have to do some modifications, adjusting speeds, and fixing some uh, some issues with the raw data. Uh, that is common. So a lot of people that uh, start getting into mocap go in with the expectation that, oh, this is um, a, a replacement for traditional animation, and that I don't need any animation experience whatsoever to just create high quality AAA uh, level animations and and that's not the case and people get disappointed when they start and feel like hey I th there's some clipping there's some foot slippage I don't know how to fix that now these are things you will have to learn how to do alongside motion capture which gets you 80 to 90 percent of the way there um, so again if this is something that interests you and you'd like to check it out check the link in the description to go to Rococo's page where they now have an indie creator bundle uh, which gives you 40 percent off of their suits smart gloves uh, head rig and so on. Uh, check the link to see if you're eligible for the Indie Creator Bundle. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.